I'm Ryan Roadkill, an artist and illustrator from Newcastle. I work heavily in the motorcycle industry and I'm obsessed with motorcycles. Earliest memories of illustration for me is uh, sort of trying to entertain myself as a kid, just filling sketchbooks up full of just random drawings. Um, mainly of aircraft, I remember that. As I started getting older, I started sort of uh, bringing in a bit of influence from here and there, mainly from 80s and 90s skate art, I would say. That was some of my earliest memories of really graphic, illustrative artwork. And I remember being drawn that just because of the really vibrant fluorescent colours and the thick black line work. And um, yeah, and then it just sort of built from there, you know, like looking at like Jim Phillips sort of artwork and uh, Santa Cruz and the Screaming Hand and stuff. That, that stuff stays with you for years and you, you don't really forget it, you know. And I think subconsciously that work did stick with me and, and started to show itself, you know, like 20, 25 years later. It's just those influences that you pick up through the years and maybe influences that you don't realise you're picking up. But I think it's just all is starting to come together now for my artwork. Yeah, stickers I think are super important um, as an artist um, because they're just a little a small snapshot of your artwork. Um, and you don't have to see it in a gallery, you don't have to see it you know, on a wall. It's just a, a snapshot of an artist's work and you can put it anywhere you like. And as a kid, they were brilliant for like stamping your ownership on something. So you would just litter everything, your, your bike with stickers, you literally skateboard with stickers and yeah. And it just became like yours once you'd, you know, it was totally unique to you. When someone buys a piece of work for me, I'll throw stickers in. And um, A, people enjoy that, just getting the stickers, you know. But secondly, you don't know where that's going to end off. It could be anywhere in the world, slapped on anything. I've always been into motorbikes, you know, like since I was a kid, I've uh, sort of ridden motorbikes. In the, in the summer holidays, we used to like, a few of our mates would just chip in for a can of fuel and like put fuel in our mates' bikes and just ride around farms and stuff and farmers' fields. And as I said before, you know, like things like that sort of uh, stay in your psyche. The, they um, like subconsciously just work themselves into your work. And um, I've been very lucky that I've got a lot of work in the motorcycle industry and that's sort of, you know, it wasn't a, it wasn't an intentional um, mix of those two things, you know, I work in motorcycles, but it just seemed to happen and it was sort of right place, right time. And yeah, and it sort of snowballed from there really. So you've got this set of stickers here with three different faces, two different gobble straps. Um, and various other stickers that you can lay down and just completely customize the piece yourself. Uh, the base is a sticker as well. So you can apply stickers and then put that down as a sticker on any surface you want. Or alternatively, you could frame that up as well and have it as a piece of art and stick on your wall. The concept of it is that you've got this rider, sort of mysterious rider, riding through the desert somewhere. You know, I'm not too specific about where it actually is. It's sort of up to the uh, up to you guys to decide where it is. Really, I'll leave that open to you and decide how how it looks, who's riding the bike, and uh, here's a couple of samples of what you could do. Mix and match all the stickers. Stick as many on as you want. Could be on the leather jacket. Could be on the helmet, or you could keep some spare and stick them on your fridge. And you've got the wolfman face, the skeleton face, and the lady's face. So for this project, um, it started with sketches, and then I moved digitally into inking and colouring through the Wacom Cintiq, which is a great tool for me because um, it speeds up the process massively when you're on a tight deadline. Um, I can just work straight to screen, and uh, I know exactly how the line work's going to pan out, and how it's going to look and for me it looks pretty much exactly the same as if I'd done it with um, a pencil and pen and brush and ink. So a project normally starts like this where I'll do a few sketches um, to get approved by the client because um, they might want to change a few things. 
And in this case, it's sort of started with the background, um, put the sky in, added all the colour, and then I worked up all of the individual sticker elements, like the skull face, and I uh, set them up so that they're positioned correctly. And I have to go around and add a little bit of bleed and trapping around the edge, ready for the cut line to go in, just to make sure that they still all fit after they've been cut. And then for this project, I didn't have a set idea on how it was going to look colour-wise. But then um, I came across some photos that I had in my phone from a trip I did a while back. And uh, there were some desert scenes. And I just thought that a nice desert sunset would be really, really cool with the, the faded uh, background there. And the colour reproduction on these is just perfect. Look how vibrant the colours are from the original file to the print. The future for me um, hopefully you know holds uh, more brand collaborations and hopefully some more mural work because that's just really good fun to do basically. Um, yeah and I was really looking forward to getting back into like a big studio space where I can throw paint around and stuff and just get back into it. I mean, working from home does have its perks, you know, like, you know, I can just go down to the garage and settle on my bikes for a bit or make a cup of tea. Um, and, you know, everything's here. It's great. But, uh, I mean, it does get a little bit tight for space tripping over the dog and stuff. Mm -hmm.